You are watching the Dangerous News Network, News, Sports, and Politics, where the content is uncut, uncensored, and unbelievable. And this is your host, Daniel McFarland. And tonight's topic is going to be about the Detroit Tigers. And yes, the Detroit Tigers, they actually made a move. They made some more moves. They signed Raji Davis a outfielder from the Toronto Blue Jays, and they signed Jabba Chamberlain from the New York Yankees to another, to a one-year deal. Here's how I rate the deals. Mediocre at best. Mediocre at best. Jabba Chamberlain, is mediocre at best. Yes, he has that fastball, but what has he done? Jabba Chamberlain is not that much of a player. I'm sorry. Jabba Chamberlain is not that good. There's a reason why the Yankees were eager to give him away. And Roger Davis, yes, Roger Davis is going to give you 40 stolen bases. Even coming off the bench, he can give you 40 stolen bases. He's a better hitter than Quentin Berry. Now, he's not a great defender, but his speed's going to be an asset. I think Roger Davis and Andy Dirks are both fourth outfielders, and I don't think it's their very ideal. I don't think they're even close to ideal, but if they can platoon together, maybe the Detroit Tigers might have a little something. Roddy Davis can steal 40 bases, and Andy Dirks is a jet is a jack-of-all-trades type of guy. But overall, the Detroit Tigers, we needed power after we play, after losing, after losing Johnny Peralta and after losing Omar Infante and after trading Prince Fielder, we need power. And we need power in the worst way. Now, yes, Prince Fielder and his aloof attitude, that was not welcome. And we're not going to miss his aloof attitude. That is a potential distraction waiting to happen. But as much as we're going to, as much as we won't miss his aloof attitude, we're going to miss his power. That's the truth. But we do have a leadoff hitter, finally. Ian Kinsler. Now he's gonna he might steal thirty bases again. I don't think Ian Kinsler lost that much. But he's not getting any younger though. Tory Hunter He's due to fall off the cliff. The number three hitter, Miguel Cabrera, I think he's still threatens for the triple crown. Victor Martinez, he's a clutch hitter. And I think is that's going to prevent teams from pitching around Miguel Cabrera. They have to pitch to Miguel Cabrera with Victor Martinez hitting behind him. But we need but we needed power hitting to behind Miguel Cabrera. Johnny Peralta could have hit fifth. And he could have played third base if we were gonna keep Jose Iglesias. But Nick Castellanos, he's projected to hit fifth. 
Austin Jackson is projected to hit six. Number seven is going to be Alex Avid with number eight is going to be it's going to be Roddy Davis and Andy Dirks. And number nine here is going to be Jose Iglesias. That's a week five through nine. Nick Castellanos, he hasn't proven anything yet. And from his September call-up, Nick Castellanos sucked in his September, September call-up. Austin Jackson might hit better in the bottom of the order, but I'm not holding my breath on offense. He's still a strikeout king. 200 strikeouts, I'm not holding my breath. Alex Avila, he stinks on both ends of the floor. He stinks in every aspect of the fucking game. Why was why is Alex Avila still in the major leagues is what I'm asking. The only reason why Alex Avila the reason why Alex Avila is still a Detroit Tiger is because of political reasons. His father. It's politics that's keeping Alex Avila in the major leagues. On any other team, and he would be back in Triple A. That's the truth. Raji Davis and Andy Dirt, I guess for what their skills are, they're adequate part time players. And number nine, Jose Iglesias. Now he's got gold glove potential, but like, but that 300 that he put up in 2013 is likely a fluke, influenced by his Babbitt, bad and average with balls put in play. Yes, it's likely an aberration. Jose Iglesias. He'll be lucky to hit his way out of a paper bag. And to add insult to injury, the starting pitching got weaker. Matt Scherzer, he's the ace of the staff. Justin Verlander, he's a co-ace. And Anibal Sanchez, Anibal Sanchez, now, he's another number one pitcher. Could be number one pitcher. He's definitely an elite number two pitcher on most teams. He's a number one pitcher on some teams, too. A low ERA, you can count on him having a low ERA. Yes. I think Honorbar Sanchez is next to win the Cy Young Award. Could be. And report, but let's look at the back end of the starting rotation. Rick Porcello, he has shown beyond a shadow of a doubt that he's no more than a borderline number four pitcher. He's a good number five pitcher. That's it. He has shown his value. And I would have traded him before I traded the fifth year. And number five pitcher, Drew Smiley, he could be as good as Doug fifth year. But we don't know if he can go 180 innings. Maybe he can, maybe he can't. Is he that durable? I don't know. I would have traded Rick Porcello for bullpen help. As million as the return would have been. Let's get real. Rick Porcello, we could replace him with Capuano 
and we can replace him with Sean Markham. Capuano is a good bet to go 200 innings. Despite his down 2013, he's a better bet to go 200 than Sean Markham, who's injury prone, who is still better than Rick Porcello. Even on his worst day, he's still better than Rick Porcello on his best day, which is a number four pitcher. That's my analysis on that. The bench is looking like Don Kelly, um, Steve Lombardazzi, or however the hell you pronounce his name, um, Brian Holiday, and and a platoon of Roger Davis and Andy Dirt. That's what the bench is looking like. But let's see. But it's not looking good for the Detroit Tigers. I'm predicting I'm predicting no better than five hundred. And it's not because of the starting picking so much. It's that offense. You have to learn how to score first. You have to you have to score runs to win. And if Nick Castellanos, in the likely event that Nick Castellanos doesn't pan out, Dave Dombrowski, he will be fired. This would be Dave Dombrowski's last straw. Because to be honest, Dave Dombrowski, he ain't done nothing. He's done nothing for the Detroit Tigers, really. Mike Illich built the winner, not Dave Dombrowski. Because teams were hip to the idea that Cameron Maven was shit and Andrew Miller was a lefty specialist, one-out guy only. If... If the Miami Marlins wanted quality, we wouldn't have gotten Miguel Cabrera. That's the reason why the Detroit Tigers are relevant right now, because Mike Illich pushed for Miguel Cabrera. Dave Dombrowski had nothing to do with the Detroit Tigers' success. Jim Leland, he was... He was the most successful manager that the Detroit Tigers had since Sparky Anderson. No, he's not the greatest manager. He wasn't the greatest manager, but but you can do worse than Jim Leland. We won't know if Jim Leland was or wasn't the answer for the Detroit Tigers. But I can tell you that Dave Dombrowski is not the answer for the Detroit Tigers as GN. And that's all I got to say about that's all I got to say about the Detroit Tigers after they traded Doug Fister, which is a which was the dumbest move that Dave Dombrowski made. You don't trade an elite number four pitcher who could start as a number two pitcher on some teams. You don't trade proven talent for guys that aren't likely best to ever make it to the major leagues and for for bench players that you can find on the fucking street. You don't do that. That is a bad move. If you couldn't get much value for Doug Fister, even if you could, you don't do that. You don't do that. That was absolutely unnecessary, and it was absolute, and it absolutely smelled of pie in the sky. That was an absolute pie in the sky move. That's all I got to say about the Detroit Tigers. 
and the off-season moves of Dave Dombrowski. And this is the Dangerous Things Network. I'm Daniel McFarlane, and I approve this message.